Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at. It is the Earthmaster here on this Sunday, end of the weekend, uh, June 25th, 2023. It's about 11.52 a.m. here along the West Coast. A 4.0 earthquake coming into the uh, Andaman Sea area. The latest quake here on the globe, also a 3.4, looks like, into the uh, Turkey region. Seeing a little bit of uptick here across the area today. Uh, we did pick up a large earthquake down here into the Tonga region overnight with a 6.0 coming in this mix of earthquake activity. Looks like that swarm is kicking back up once again. Got to watch this area pretty closely because we've been seeing some deeper movement quakes here with that 7.2 followed up by shallower swarming in the 5 and 6 range up around the Tonga Ridge here. These are very shallow earthquakes uh, between uh, oh, about 7 to 10 kilometers on average that's just the defaulted depth there but we're also noticing um following that swarm some further deep activity here uh, right due to the west where we would expect the pressure to be the uh, greatest 4.7 500 kilometers deep this following the movement this morning there uh, but again we did see a 6.0 in this swarm activity so that makes uh well that's going to bring up the total tally here to a pretty good number I think we need to go back uh it's been almost a week now since this swarming has been ongoing i think it's been over that so let's go ahead and bring up the last 30 days but most of this activity occurring within the last 10 days so there's that swarming area there in the tonga ridge we actually had a couple different swarms down here in the kermadec islands uh near the 7.2 that struck earlier mid-month uh, that was way down there into the subduction level, 175 kilometers deep. But uh, the swarming area has got me a little interested here in it. Um, just kind of figuring out exactly what it's up to. Um, obviously, uh, it is a major player in producing some large earthquakes out here around the Tonga Trench and the Kermadec Trench. Notice this bend out here. Looks like this is where uh, a good portion of the um, strain is historically. Uh, still watching the New Zealand area with all this bouncing back and forth. New Zealand did pick up, uh, I believe they had a uh, earthquake there last night down into the uh, Auckland Islands, but it looks like it's disappeared. Let's go ahead. Let me go over to the GeoNet servers here real quick and see what's going on with that um, earthquake that I seen yesterday. It's a way south. Maybe it, maybe it got deleted. Who knows? It was definitely uh, over 12 hours ago. Mostly smaller microquakes noted here across the area today in New Zealand. A um, couple deleted events yesterday, but that's not the... Uh, I'm wanting to say it was like a four-pointer. If I remember right, looks like that got removed completely. Go over here to the EMSC. Oh, well, that's actually huh, that's that's a little odd. USGS reporting a 2.7 on the globe. That's a for at least for the uh, New Zealand area. That's a little strange. Let me go over here to the EMSC model here real quick and see what we have going on here. Alrighty, well, it's going to be worldwide for the last 48 hours. Let me see here. It's one of these quakes down here around the area. I believe it was this one, that 4.7 that came in last night. Here we go. We found it. USGS not reporting it. Neither is the GeoNet servers. Um, so it's possible it got deleted, but hasn't been um, removed yet from the EMSC model, the CSEM model here. That 4.7 coming into the Auckland Islands. Local, that was UTC time here, but that was just after, oh, I don't know. It was just after um, about 10 o'clock or so, my time when that uh, earthquake kicked off. 
Um, let me go check. I always like to double check the uh, their earthquake drums to see if there is indeed an earthquake that will show us here down south. It should show up if that's indeed a 4.7. I believe it was going to be the signature right about here. That that's about the right time frame. The closest station here at the tip of the South Island, very extra, uh, extreme end, does show that earthquake. But maybe uh, maybe it got downgraded. Either way, there's some type of uh, seismic signature there last night. Just a little odd how it disappeared. All right, uh, either way, a little bit of movement there. Uh, North Island with that 2.7 being reported. We are noticing a little bit of activity shifting here to the northwest of the Tonga region around the Solomon Islands, it looks like, uh, or just outside the Solomon Islands to the Santa Cruz Islands south into Vanuatu. A couple of earthquakes about 8 o'clock this morning, a 5.0. And a 4.6 coming into this area. So it looks like maybe things are starting to uh, accumulate further stress considering all the plate movement back over here. I mean, that's the general direction of the plate movement here. Notice the northwestern um, arrows here. That does apply strain uh, into this further air, into these areas. Uh, off the coast of Australia, looks like um, did see a 4.1 as well near the uh, Ashmore Island area, away from the somewhat away from the plate boundary. Uh, this movement here into the Izu Islands was from yesterday. We were watching a pretty good swarm of activity there. Looks like that's the only movement. Today's activity all shifted around the Philippines southward and across the Indonesia Islands area with uh, with that four-pointer just coming in here into the um, Andaman Sea area. Very active over here it looks like today, at least on this side of the globe. Quite the, um, quite the broad range of earthquake activity spread out across all the plates. There's some movement, uh, a couple four-pointers up there into um, Afghanistan, it looks like. Well, there's 4.4 in Afghanistan. Uh, about 9 o'clock this morning. Some earthquake activity way up north from last night. Uh, Mediterranean looks quiet here on this map, but uh, it's not the case here, at least as far as the smaller quakes go. Quite a few twos and threes out there spread out across the plate boundary today. Uh, also noticing some movement uh, into the Iceland area looks like a 3.0 coming in. Let's see what we got. Uh, nothing showing up there on the USGS map, but it looks like potentially EMSC reporting this 3.0. Iceland about one kilometer deep. Some further movement up north as well. A couple fours way up on top of the globe. Well north of Greenland. Don't see too much activity up there, but goodness, that's literally on top of the globe if you think about it. Not for sure why USGS isn't reporting it. Well, maybe they are. There we go. Just barely. I forgot we're on the flat scale model Earth here and can barely see them. I can't pull this up anymore. It doesn't go up that far. And I don't even know if I'm going to be able to read them. Oh, goodness. So it looks like... <laughs> looks like a couple smaller earthquakes up there in the four range uh, taking place. Uh, in that area on top of the globe. So definitely some odd earthquake activity in a couple of regions today. South America, a lot of movement there from last night uh, into the Chile area, getting those stacks of pancakes there, or at least rings in this case, uh, being picked up there into the uh, Peru-Chile Trench. That's going to be a lot of this activity listed here on the map. Quite a few fours kicking off there yesterday. It looks like we did have a couple more this morning into the Peru area. This has been a heightened area of earthquake activity recently, but nothing big going on yet. Uh, some movement along the Middle America Trench, a 4.1, and a couple other smaller quakes as well. All right, let's get into the states, see what we got going on here, if there's anything noteworthy to chat about. Um, Southern California, 
little spotty activity. No, ma no major swarming going on. In fact, the 2.5 map and above. Well, that shows not a not a whole lot going on there in Southern California for now. One day that will change, right? A little bit of movement up here in Northern California. This is the Lake Almanor area. This is a region that did see some swarming here. Oh, has it been over 30 days now? Let me let me double check here. It has, as far as that uh, five-pointer that came in up here. Um, but for the most part, uh, the swarming area consisted within this area of the lake, underneath the lake here. But it looks like we're starting to get a little bit of migration further south and away from the lake, closer to the dam, Canyon Dam area. When I was up there checking out these earthquakes, the water was a ways back, a ways away from the, uh, the dam area. I don't know how often the water even gets up to the lake dam area, but um, definitely no threat of any um, issues there with any earthquakes around the dam uh, for now. But uh, yeah, getting a little bit of activity there into that region. There's quite a few fault systems up there. Um, not for sure which one it's on though. It looks like it may be on the Skinner Fault, but there is, uh, I remember reading the article here about a newly discovered fault system underneath the lake. Of course, with all the snow, the runoff, the rain, I'm surprised California is being this quiet. I thought for certain when we're getting all this rainfall out here that, uh, and then again, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't kick up automatically, you know, following rainfall events. It takes a little while for that, uh, that um, rainwater and, and groundwater to uh, really soak down into the faults there uh, to maybe lubricate them a little bit and trigger some earthquakes. So it may still be coming here. It uh, just looks awfully quiet here following a very wet winter in Northern California. Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot going on. Uh, let's look at the Yellowstone overviews. I'm not really seeing anything major going on there, folks, at all. Did have some earthquake activity, or not uh, earthquake activity, but thunderstorm activity yesterday stirring up some uh, environmental noise on the maps, but uh, I don't believe um, we see too much earthquake activity out there. Looks like maybe a smaller couple quakes here over the last few hours, but that's very, very minimal. Alaska area looks pretty calm. Uh, some smaller quake activity up there. Hawaii, about the same. We got one earthquake, though, up at Mauna Loa. 2.4, about 10 kilometers deep. The latest information statement here from the Kilauea, or the uh, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, this is put out today. Currently at a pause mode, folks. Nothing uh, has kicked up yet, but we'll continue to monitor that and uh, wait for this to... Um, return to the eruptive stage but for now everything's paused there at Kilauea Volcano and um, nothing going on across Mauna Loa occasionally occasionally Mauna Loa gets uh, some earthquakes up there uh, we'll watch that if we start seeing some swarming then we know something's going on below uh, that may be an uh, indicator of, of uh, you know some potential eruption here coming up soon but just with a 2.4 10 kilometers deep, well underneath here. We'll watch that, though. Uh, space weather activity here today, not a whole lot going on, um, except for there's still this one sunspot here um, on the northwestern quadrant of the sun that looks about the only area of interest, at least on the UV filter ray. Uh, a look at the sunspot numbers here, quite a bit. The latest imagery here will show us that uh, region of interest this is about the only one that i've been watching here over the past day or so show some signs of you know strengthening while everyone else out here along the the sun's visible disc is um fading like the wind out there so to speak so this is about the only area that may pose a threat for some sea flare uh and maybe an m flare activity throughout its time while it's facing the uh, the earth Still show 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 40, 10% chance for an X flare. I doubt that. Things are fairly calm across the board. Not a whole lot of auroras in the forecast for now. Uh, the weather outlook here today, current day one, quite a bit of um, potential for some enhanced risk for some severe weather. 
That includes a 10% chance of tornado probability listed up there in the yellow. That's going to be Cincinnati, Ohio, Louisville, Kentucky, Fort Wayne, Indiana area. If you guys are out there, you do have a potential of seeing some strong damaging tornadoes today. So make sure you stay weather aware. Also some wind and hail events listed up there in the, dash, the uh, dashed area. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee, Cincinnati, uh, and these areas listed up here on the map. So wind and hail and tornado potential somewhat elevated today across these areas on the map. Make sure you got your weather radio on. I'm sure most people are at home. Um, so yeah, stay safe out there. Thunderstorm activity out here across, uh, well, Yellowstone again, up into Montana, Northern California as well. Nothing big going on. Most of this activity is up in the mountains. But uh, as you can see, um, quite a bit of coverage here for thunderstorm activity. All right, guys, we're going to jump off here. Have a good day. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on tonight. Take care.